When you're building a computer, there's a lot of things to consider. Do you want an ATX case or do you want a micro ATX case? Are you making a gaming system or is your computer going to be used more for audio and video editing? These are questions that you'd have to ask yourself when you're deciding to pick out the components for your computer. In this particular video, we're really going to deal only with the motherboards, although other computer components will be mentioned. You have the option of using AMD or Intel. The first motherboard we're going to look at is a motherboard for the AMD platform. As you can tell, it's an X570 motherboard. It's also a micro ATX motherboard. What's interesting about this motherboard is that it does have Thunderbolt 3 support. It also has USB 3.1 Gen 2 ports, or you can say USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports. It's basically the same thing. The only thing that's really different is if you have USB 3.2 Gen 2 times 2. That will give you the 20 gigabits per second. As I stated, this motherboard does have Thunderbolt 3 support, but it does require you to buy a PCI Express expansion card. We are now going to look at a motherboard for the Intel platform. This motherboard has Thunderbolt 3 support, but it also has a USB 3.1 Gen 2 header. I find that to be one of the more interesting features about this particular motherboard. I'll get into that later. I wanted people to see that this motherboard has the Thunderbolt 3 ports right on the I.O. shield eliminating the need to buy a PCI Express expansion card in order to get Thunderbolt 3. By having a USB 3.1 Gen 2 header on this motherboard, it will allow you to have the faster USB speed on the front side of your computer. The USB ports that are in the expansion bay are only 5 gigabits per second. They're not the 10 gigabits per second. But I hope people can understand why it's cool to have expansion bays and why it would be cool to have USB 3.1 Gen 2 headers on your motherboard. Why not have the faster speed on the front side of your computer? When I go shopping for motherboards, I'm looking for motherboards that have all the features I want. I want to avoid buying PCI Express expansion cards, although sometimes buying an expansion card is the best option. If you needed 10 gigabit per second networking support and you noticed the least expensive motherboard that offered 10 gigabit per second networking right on the I.O. shield was $365, you might find a motherboard for $150 that has all the other features you want and it would be in your best interest to buy the motherboard for $150 and then just buy this PCI Express expansion card. If you find yourself running out of PCI Express slots, you can get an M.2 adapter to add more PCI Express expansion slots. This motherboard for the AMD platform is kind of cool in my opinion. It does have Thunderbolt 3 support. Obviously it has the USB 3.2 Gen 2 type ports on the I.O. shield. A lot of motherboards do in 2019, but this motherboard does have a USB 3.2 Gen 2 header, which will allow you to have the faster speed USB ports on the front of your computer. If you notice, the price is a little bit more expensive than the Intel motherboard I showed, and you would have to buy the Thunderbolt 3 card in order to actually have Thunderbolt 3 ports for this computer. I want to talk about why I purchased my Gigabyte Z390M motherboard. The main reason I bought this motherboard is because it does have Thunderbolt 3 support. It was one of the least expensive motherboards out on the market that had that. I admit I have to buy a PCI Express card if I want the Thunderbolt 3 support, but that's a better option for me because if I don't end up using Thunderbolt 3, I haven't wasted any money on a feature I'm not gonna use. I'm sure some people are saying, hey, you didn't mention your motherboard has M.2 support. Some people are going to say, you didn't mention the fact that your motherboard has RGB lighting. I admit that might be a nice feature for some people to have, but it's a feature I'm not even going to use. And sometimes when you buy a motherboard, you are paying for features that you will not use. 
it's not hard to find a motherboard that's going to offer the best bang for the buck for your particular needs. Just simply look at all the motherboards, look at the ones that have all the features you want, but at the same time, don't overpay for a feature. If a certain feature is going to cost $100 more, but you can get that same feature by buying a $40 PCI Express expansion card, just get the PCI Express expansion card. If you've decided you want to go with the AMD platform, I don't recommend using the older motherboards, not even the X470, for a couple of reasons. If we look at the X470 motherboards, if you notice, the slot that the graphics card goes in is PCI Express 3.0 compliant, but a lot of the other PCI Express slots are still PCI Express 2.0 compliant. If you look at the price of the X470 motherboards versus the X570 motherboards, there's not much of a difference in price. As you folks can probably tell, I did not create this video for people who are already building their own computer systems. A lot of my viewers and subscribers are into audio and video gear, and they're not really into computers that much, although they have made comments that they would like to build their first computer system. That's kind of why I've made this video. That's why I use the Thunderbolt 3 support because a lot of audio and video gear can make use of Thunderbolt 3. I obviously couldn't discuss all the different components and all the different options for all the motherboards on the market in the year 2019. The viewer of this video will have to start looking at motherboards and kind of look at what different options there are and what different components they may or may not need realize that they might be able to just get a PCI Express expansion card if they don't see a certain option or feature that they want on the motherboard. I do want to say that the X570 motherboards for the AMD platform do have PCI Express 4.0 expansion slots. The Z390 motherboards for the Intel platform do not. Having said that, that's not a reason to pick one motherboard over the other. I'll explain why. Most people worry about the performance of their CPU and their graphics processor. As of now, there are no graphics cards that are hitting a bottleneck because of PCI Express 3.0. I doubt they will hit a bottleneck within the next four or five years. A lot of you will buy a new motherboard or a whole new computer system within the next four or five years. That's why you wouldn't really want to choose one platform over the other just because of the PCI Express 4.0. I know some people have stated the M.2 solid state drives can operate a lot faster with the PCI Express 4 motherboards. The transfer speeds will be fast if you're transferring from one M.2 solid state drive to another M.2 solid state drive. The bottleneck comes in when you're trying to transfer to a USB drive or a Thunderbolt drive or even a SATA hard drive. It would probably be more beneficial to have the super fast USB speed on the front side of your computer. The reason being if you go back 10 years ago, a lot of photographers would have a 120 gigabyte SD card and they may only have 80 gigabytes on it and they would complain that it took 45 minutes to transfer the data. Solid state USB drives are getting faster, SD cards are getting faster, and that's why it'd be nice to have a header on your motherboard that would allow you to connect these devices up at a lot higher speed than what you're getting right now. That's something I'd worry about more than PCI Express 4.0. When you're looking at different motherboards and comparing the features, make sure the features are practical.